Hello and welcome back to Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and this is going to be a fun little tutorial on creating an organic uh, object. Uh, I saw this picture at the um, website uh, c4dcafe.com which is a site that's devoted to Cinema 4D and body paint users. And um, that particular site has a modeling challenge every month or so. Uh, I think maybe two times a month they they uh, sponsor a modeling challenge. Uh, you have to use Cinema 4D <coughs> to um, present your entry. But uh, when we were a couple months ago back in the Olympic season, they had an Olympic modeling challenge, and this was one of the entries that won one of the uh, the the top ranks and I really liked it because of uh, one its simplicity it's just uh, if you look at it it's just three simple lines that really uh, accurately portray what the uh, the action and the energy and the dynamics that are going on in this uh, image and the creator of this model is Wayne Sparrowhawk and I contacted him and um, complimented him on his um, on his winning and asked him if I could use the image that he had uh, posted at C4D Cafe uh, to recreate it and make a tutorial out of it. Well he was more than uh, more than happy to allow me to use his image and uh, was uh, was happy that I wanted to make a tutorial out of it. So this is a cool little uh, character, a cool little object that we're going to recreate here in Hexagon and uh, it's going to be extremely easy. So this was the little, um, this was my effort into making it and uh, I'm happy with the uh, the results that, uh, that I got from it and um, believe it or not it's going to be extremely easy. So this was my version of it. Now this was the only, this image that I have in the background is the only reference image that I had of this little, um, of this little character. And while Wayne said that, hey, if you need any more, uh, anything else, more pictures, resources, whatever, uh, let me know. And I thought, well, it certainly would be easy if I had a front shot of what the guy looked like, or a top-down shot, or clearly a side view of what the guy looked like. But I thought, well, I think it'll be challenging trying to create a duplicate of this little character based on this uh, perspective view. And so I declined any uh, any further images. Uh, it certainly would have been easier, but I wanted a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to start off by creating a cube. And let me put this into the position that I want. Center it in our image here. Don't need something quite that large. And I'm just going to apply one level of smoothing to it. I'll come down and click on the little lightning bolt that it uh, creates. Okay, now I've got uh, 16 sides from my original four. I'm going to stretch it out like that. Come up here, select a uh, face. Now what I want to do is turn on symmetry along the z-axis. If you're not familiar with the symmetry tool, uh, please see my tutorial on using this tool and, and what it does, and uh, you'll have a better understanding as you work through this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to select this face, and this is going to be his head. Uh, come up here to Vertex Modeling, click on Sweep Surface, and I'm going to apply one level of smoothing to it. Now click on Sweep Surface, and I'm just going to pull it out a few times. No, I don't like that I did it too many times. Let's come back again. One, two, three. I think I had done it four times. That will work. And I'm going to come down here and create his, uh, his legs. I'm going to create a I'm going to create a really uh, subdivision here, very close to his body, and then I'm going to come down here and just uh, create his knees, and uh, go on down to his calves and and foot, and that looks pretty good. Let me 
stretch out his hindquarters a little bit. Okay, let me pull this out. And uh, this is this is really a, a simple model. We have done pretty much, except for the arms, uh, all of the modeling to it that we need to as far as subdividing it. And now we're just going to play around with tweaking it and getting it into the shape that we want it to be. And um, you can really spend endless hours tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, never getting it just how you want. And you can blow an inordinate amount of time just playing around with it. So I will do my best to uh, to not make this into a, a six-day tutorial because I know if um, if I had unlimited internet resources I would be playing with this for uh, for hours and hours and hours just playing and tweaking and tweaking never ultimately being completely satisfied with it. I would just play and play and play. So now I'm just uh, honing down the body to get it to uh, basic shape that I want. Like I said, all of the subdividing, except for the arms, um, has already been done. Taper down these uh, his calves a little bit. I think I may want to make this a little bit thicker here. And bring it in. So there we are. That's a nice taper. Okay, let's work on... Let's bring his uh, head out a little bit. And I think we might do well if we duplicate this loop of edges that I just selected. I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to duplicate them. Give myself a little bit more, uh, a few more polygons so I can pull uh, I want that, so I can pull his, uh, so I can pull his head forward without distorting it unnecessarily. Looks good. Okay, let's uh, come up here to his to his head. When I uh, was corresponding with Wayne, he let me know that he was a uh, graphic designer or an illustrator. And in looking at this image, it just uh, you can tell that someone someone knows how to very cleanly and effectively portray an idea with the bare minimum. Uh, use of lines. This uh, I really like the flow and the shape to this thing, and uh, well, it's obvious that that's what Wayne Sparrowhawk does best because I really like this this object. All right, now let's uh, start tapering in his head a little bit. Loop that. Bring it in some. Let's loop this one. Bring that in some. I suppose we could bring this up. And now it is simply just a matter of playing around with shaping it making it how you like. And if you're like me, you'll probably go on and on and on for an inordinate amount of time until you uh, finally are satisfied with it. So I'm going to pause it right here, do a little body shaping, and we'll be right back. Okay, so that's the basic outline that I want. Now I'm going to come over here and taper in his, his legs a little bit. Don't need him uh, looking like he's got fat knees. Let's 
Let's see what happens if I grab those two. Let's draw it inward. Oops. Select those two, draw them inward a little bit. There we are. And I'm just going to create a little width here. All right, now it's time to create some arms to them. And we're just going to make a few little subdivides here. I'm going to come up to my tessellation tool. I'm going to click on this second one here. And I want his arms to be right to, to fall right into this area. I want to sprout or grow his arms right out of there. So with my tessellation tool, I'm going to come up to this line, click, come down to that one, click again. I'm going to select the tool again. Come over here, click down, click again. All right, now I've got a nice little facet uh, face to grow his arms out of. Spin around to a top view, come up here to sweep surface, and two, three little uh, subdivisions, and there are his arms. Not exactly uh, the look that I want right now, but uh, I'm just going to loop and do some selecting, some looping, and put them into place. I do like that they are going downwards for me, which is what I want. Select this one. Let's bring it in a little bit. Select that. Bring that in a little bit. Just a little bit tapering. Narrow that one down. Twist it just a little bit so it flows with the uh, with his body, with the angle of the arms, and they are they are coming out a little bit too wide for for my personal taste. So let's select those there on the end. No, not that one. Select that. Select that. Loop it. Select that one, loop that, and we'll just bring it in a little bit, make them a little bit shorter. Let's see how that looks. Twist it a little bit. There we are. Now let's see what we can do with this series of loops here, which I guess would probably be his shoulders. Okay, let's get on to making the, um, well, let's do the steering wheel. I'm going to rotate around to a top view, come up here to lines, and just I'm just going to create a circle with the tw default 20 number of points. That's, uh, that's fine with me. Now let me put this into place here. Zero all this out. And there we are. That's where I want it. Okay. Rotate to a top view. And I certainly don't need all these lines. I'm going to come up here to select points. Um, eh, I'm going to delete those. So this is going to be the little man's steering wheel. And if I recall from the reference photo, it looks like the steering wheel extends just a little bit beyond the edge of his hands. And that looks about right. So come up here to surface modeling. I'm going to click on thickness and just uh, make this thing about as large. I'm judging the thickness of it based on the largest thickness of the the, 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 the widest part of the steering wheel in the image. So proportionately, that looks okay. And uh, I know it lowered the number of, of uh, points down to six because we're going to add some smoothing to it as we go further into it. And that looks good. Now I'm going to add smoothing to it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to add caps to the ends now. Close that off. Close all. And now come up here and hit a uh, smoothing level of 1. There we are. 
let's bring it down click on select faces I'm going to use my uh, soft selection tool Oop, I need to enable the Z um, axis symmetry there we are now I can uh, whittle both ends down like a little thin toothpick and that looks good I'm just going to squash it a little bit oh, I want to squash the entire thing not the ends there we are okay let's uh, select those center ones there and I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit create a little bit more of an arc Actually, I'm gonna undo that I'm gonna hit soft selection lower my numbers down now I'll try it Oop, I'm gonna increase my radius well, let's try that there we are I like that that's a nicer smoother um, effect okay and that is looking pretty good as I said it, uh, it you can do this for days or at least I can I can do this for days until I get just the look that I'm uh, that I'm after and um, make this tutorial extremely long and probably boring don't like that let's rotate that a little bit bring that down rotate that bring that down there we are that's nicer there and got a nice taper okay now let's uh, create some wheels for this uh, little fella I'm gonna come up here to 3d primitives I'm gonna select my sphere now I the default is always the um, whatever this one sphere with poles but uh, I'm not going to use this particular option because at the top and the bottom of the wheel as we form it uh, it will add those little points there so I opted for the geodesic sphere and we can lower the number down considerably to five that way you don't have those noticeable points at the top and bottom of the poles of the uh, sphere okay this is wheel number one make it a little bit bigger now that I'm just gonna squash it along the z-axis like that it does look a little large control D to duplicate that give him a wheel in the front now I'm going to take him and rotate him in kind of a racing or speed position grab his handlebars pull them down give them a little uh, rotation so they are in line with his uh, with his arms and I guess his butt is a little high in the air we can probably pull that down that just looks painful doing with our reference image I think his head should probably come out a little bit more uh, gra um, grab this edge there we are so there's our little uh, model character based off a reference image 
courtesy of Wayne Sparrowhawk. And uh, before we finish up, I'm just going to grab that, grab these edges here. Let's see if we can't bring this down a little bit. Bring it down just a little bit. Grab those, loop it, bring that down a little bit. And let's put a color on, and we will be done. Let's see what color is that. Oh, that'll work. And let's select his wheel. Set material. I already had this blue material set up from uh, the first model I created. And there is a little speedster dude, a little bit of organic modeling done here in uh, in Hexagon. And I, you could you could always spend a little bit more time, do a little bit more tweaking, but certainly uh, you've you've got the rough shape um, that you you could get <coughs> in any other modeling program. Now, it, to make it exactly like his, it's simply just a question of uh, spending a little bit more time and uh, going over some of the finer points and adjusting and tweaking points and edges and faces using your soft selection tool or not using your soft selection tool and uh, there you go it's a little organic character based off a reference image done here in hexagon and ready to be brought into view to be rendered so that's it thanks for watching this tutorial here at geek at play studios my name's gary miller have a good day